Hi everybody, I'm Cliff in 4CCB. In this video, I want to show you how you can build a circuit that sits between your computer and your radio so that your computer can send Morse code. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, if you saw my video on Morse Runner, using Morse Runner to simulate a contest in order to improve your CW speed, you might remember that I said that in contest situations, people who are serious contesters don't use the paddle. Instead, they've got their logging software which has macro capabilities so they can just press a function key to call CQ or press a function call to say uh, 5NN or 599, thank you. So they can just keep moving and not have to reach over to the paddle to key in somebody's call sign or, or to do this repetitive work. This little circuit will let you do that. So if you build this little circuit, you'll be able to take your laptop or netbook or something out into the world and work portable and maybe start a little pile up and uh, log frequencies as fast as you can, or you can use this to just work a contest. Um, lots of contests going on all the time, and so this, with the proper software, would let you be able to run with the big dogs. So let's look at this and talk about the parts that are here in front of you. Uh, first of all, I got this circuit uh, from a circuit diagram on Scott Davis's website, n3fjp.com. And uh, there's really not much to it. It's a transistor, one transistor, looks like a couple of uh, resistors and a couple of diodes, and that is it. So you have to have a way for the signal to get to that circuit and a way to do something with uh, the closure of those contacts that, that the transistor makes uh, so you can key the radio. Well, in order to get access um, to a serial port on my computer so that I could use the the, the lines in his diagram, he shows it using RTS, ready to send. I chose to build it with a different pin, the data terminal ready. And uh, that's the only difference here is I just used a different pin. Uh, so I had to have some way to get access to these pins. Well, USB doesn't give you access to these pins. But with a USB to serial converter, you do have access to all the pins on this DB9 connector here. So this is a trip light key span model USA-19HS and it's a very common USB to serial uh, adapter works great I've got several of them um, and that exposes the pins that you need for this circuit so what I did next was I took a DB9 just a shell of a DB9 and I soldered a couple of wires to the ground pin 5 and the data terminal ready line which is pin 4 on a DB9 so I soldered those on and I connected, uh, I connected those wires. I used the wires that had little female jumpers so that I could plug uh, the male jumpers on my breadboard where I mocked up this circuit. And so the hot wire goes to the, the DTR line and ground goes to ground. This gets plugged in here. Obviously the USB gets plugged into your computer, USB port. And once the data terminal ready line goes high on the computer to signal that you want to send something on Morse code. It closes this little electronic switch and now these things are grounded as though you had just touched your straight key. So I did kind of a similar thing. I took this 3.5 millimeter uh, cable, cut the end off of it, and I soldered a couple of female jumpers uh, to it so that I could just plug them directly into these male jumpers on my breadboard. So of course ground goes to ground and this line goes to the hot side of this. So now all we have to do is plug in this jack into where our straight key would go uh, and plug this into the computer and configure the software. And by the way before we do that when you're soldering this stuff, the pinouts of a DB9 are shown to you as though you're looking straight at the male uh, connector here. When you go to solder wires, it can be a little confusing because you're actually working at the opposite. You know, since this female plugs into the male here, the two pins that you're soldering to aren't necessarily the same two pins you think they are on this side. They do have to go straight through, so it's kind of a mirror image and it can, it can be confusing. So if you're looking at that pinout diagram and looking at the picture of the shell where I soldered it, those pins don't look like they would match, but they do once you put them together. So, uh, all right, having said that, now we've got something that we can test. So let's, uh, 
Let's go to Scott Davis' software and look at his uh, CW transmit setup, and I'll show you how it's configured, and then we'll test it. So let's do it. Let's try this with my mountain topper, my little tiny QRP radio that I just recently got. Um, now the mountain topper takes a 3.5 millimeter plug. However, unless you plug in a mono version of this, it's going to think that you have a paddle attached and we need the radio to think that it's got a straight key attached. So the way we work around that is with the mountain topper, if you plug in a paddle and then you hold the dash paddle closed while you turn it on, which I'll do now. Now it thinks that it's got a straight key attached when it really doesn't. So that's all we'll need from our little paddle here. And let's plug in our circuit now. Uh, I do have a uh, dummy load connected to the antenna right now, so we're not actually transmitting on the air. And I've got a little, uh, a little speaker here so you can hear the audio. So I've also got my computer over here, and I'm going to run uh, the N3FJP software. This is the AC log, amateur contact log. So I'm going to launch that. And we'll show you how to set this up. Now, first of all, I want to show you uh, where that COM port is. So I'm loading the device manager up here. I'm going to go down to COM ports. And you'll see that here's the key span USB serial port at COM 11. So COM 11 is what we want to configure the software with. So here in uh, AC log, if I go over to settings, transmit, CW setup, you'll see this screen has COM11 selected. I've got the DTR pin selected here. And it says down here that if you press the test button, it's going to send whatever characters are associated with the F9 function key here, which right now says this is a test. So when I click on this button, it should send this is a test in Morse code. Let's give it a try. Great, how about that? So it works like a champ. And at this point, you can see some of these other macros. I've got one that's, if I press the F1 key, it's gonna send CQ, my call sign slash P, which stands for portable, and then up, so that people will know that I'm uh, working split. Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna go through all these, what all these things mean or why they're there, but just know that this little circuit works and you can configure uh, Ham Radio Deluxe or the N3FJP software to use this interface to generate Morse code for you so that you can run a contest or uh, run a pileup uh, if you should be so lucky. So uh, there you go. Okay, so it works. Um, for only two or three bucks of parts, you can build this. You can then solder it on a, a little piece of perf board or something if you want to. And you'll now have something that you can use uh, if you want to run a contest with your radio or go work portable and, and uh, log a bunch of stations in a hurry, if you're maybe you're on an exotic vacation and you have the, the ability to do that and generate a pile up yourself. Uh, so anyway, it's a lot of fun and I hope you've uh, enjoyed this and I hope to encourage you to experiment with it and give it a try. I think you'll have a lot of fun. Thanks.